The pilot episode of Chainsaw Man is a combination of scenes that act like puzzle pieces and were jammed together, in the service of making the audience feel sorry for the unbelievably tragic and hollow protagonist. This episode also includes two of the stupidest villains that I've seen in a while. The show starts with a scene that can ruin the tension depending on what it represents. Judging by the shadow, the main protagonist arrives at the metal door. I could assume that this scene is a future flash, a sequence that will happen within the future. If that's the case, this scene gives the main protagonist a indefinite plot armor. The worst thing about plot armor is that it destroys the tension within the show. No matter what happens to the main protagonist, even if he dies, he will arrive here in front of this metal door. The next scene starts in the broken down dusty shed where the main protagonist wakes up. The main protagonist, Denji, then decides to go to work. Now, this is a clever little subversion, making the audience assume that he's going to work in order to cut down trees, but in reality he's going to his other job killing devils. Denji then starts to inner monologue about his income. He works as a lumberjack, but he also sold three of his organs, his kidney, his right eye and his golden ball. He seems to be forced to cut body parts in order to satisfy the mob. There is also a funny implication that his testicle costs less than two months of pay. He also explains that the best way he can earn money is by hunting devils. We also learn that the main character detects the devils thanks to his devil companion, Pochita. But the biggest problem of this scene is the missed opportunity of showing how Denji deals with the devils. The show could have shown how he outsmarts the devils and how he prevents getting killed. Denji seems knowledgeable about this devil's powers. If the tomato devil's seeds are not burned, he will revive again. The show doesn't explain how Denji knows about this. But what's worse is that neither of the two characters realize how valuable this devil truly is. If this devil can revive from his seeds, that means that they can literally farm him for his body parts. They obtained the infinite supply of devil corpses, and the show doesn't even realize it. The old guy then jubates the main character. First, he tells Denji that he has earned 400,000, and then he deducted what Denji owes, leaving it to only 70,000. The weird part about this scene is that Denji was surprised at all that the old guy deducted the money from him. Denji has done this shit for years. I have no idea why he would react this way other than to make the audience feel sorry for him again. In the next scene, Denji has another inner monologue, and the old guy has a conversation with his chauffeur. Chauffeur? <laughs> chauffeur? 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 Denji plans to pay his water bill and also pay money to people off-screen, leaving him only 1,800 yen to eat for a month. Denji then passes the old guy's car, meaning that the old guy followed Denji all the way here in order to just threaten him, I guess, which is quite ridiculous if you think about it. But before that happens, the old guy explains that the debt isn't really Denji's, but it's his father's debt. He also explains that Denji is of use to them, because real devil hunters will never give the Yakuza devil carcasses. And also, Denji is very obedient like a dog. The driver then tests Denji's obedience by making him eat a lit up cigarette for 100 yen. Luckily for Denji, he got the money, but he also outsmarted the driver by pretending to swallow the cigarette. Denji then daydreams of a life full of charm and wonders if he will ever be able to charm it in someone. Weirdly enough, after the flashback, we get another scene where Denji is asking for jam and sex. This time, however, it's revealed that Denji is dying, which is overkill if you ask me. Not only is he poor, not only did he have to sell his organs, not only does he have to work for the mob in order to get minimum amount of money, not only is the debt not his own, but his father's, but he also is dying from the same disease that killed his mother. Jesus Christ, how tragic can you get? So let's talk about the flashback that I referenced. Well, it was cushioned between these two jump scenes. The flashback itself is very contrived. It's kinda confusing why there was no one to help Denji after what happened to his father. There was no police officer or someone from child services to come and help him. What's more confusing is that the old guy threatens Denji to obtain 700,000 till the morning and then he just leaves. Hey Denji, you can run to the police now. 
or maybe someone from your extended family or anyone at all. Jesus. <laughs> but no, that doesn't seem to be a consideration for Denji. Also, I find it ridiculous that the old guy expects Denji to get that kind of money in a day. Denji is distraught that his father died, which is understandable, since it's implied that Denji saw what happened. So Puchito arrives and Denji gets scared. He even gives up. But it doesn't take long for Denji to gather up some courage and ask for Puchito's services in exchange for his own blood. I like that he took courage from his father's death and also from seeing Puchito needing help. Afterwards they go and find a devil within a day, which is a narrative convenience. After all, in the present day, Denji is barely making ends meet. Anyway, they find the devil and they slice it up, and then they prove that they can be of service to the mob. By the way, I have a question here. Um, is this supposed to be the driver from earlier? Why is he in the flashback? If it's him, the entire conversation from earlier makes like zero sense, since he definitely would have known Denji's situation. Did they just recycle the character design? If so, that's lazy and confusing. In the present, Denji is being driven by the old man. Denji gets annoyed that he was unable to sleep and escape reality and dream about a better life. Because let's be honest, the writer truly destroyed this guy's life. <laughs> It's revealed that the mob boss wanted to trick Denji into coming here. Denji gets backstabbed by a zombie ninja that conveniently vanishes in between scenes. Remember when I said that Pochita could detect devils? Well, he didn't detect the zombie or the zombies in general. And then the mob boss explains that the reason he is betraying Denji here is because he wants to die. He wants to die. In, in fact, all the Yukoza members want to die. Seriously, the character's motivation is to die and become a zombie. This is probably the worst character I've seen in quite a while. The zombie devil even says how stupid he is, which is a terrible lampshading attempt. Also, if you wanted to get rid of Denji more easily, you could have separated him from Puchita when you went to his shed. They didn't even try to do that, you know. By the way, the zombie devil's motivation is stupid and nonsensical too. He wants to kill devil hunters because devil hunters kill devils. But then the zombie devil kills Puchita, who is a devil himself. Wrap your head around that. <laughs> this part of the episode got really stupid really fast. If I were to remake this scene, the devil could have first killed Denji and then have Puchita attack the devil in retaliation, thus giving the zombie devil motivation to also kill Puchita. So Denji tries to escape, then the zombie devil orders the zombies to chop him to pieces. This is particularly stupid. Instead of chopping him to pieces, the zombie devil could have just converted Denji into a zombie, making the zombie devil's army of the Yakuza even better. Instead of chopping him to pieces, the zombie devil could have just ordered the zombies to eat Denji, which would have just solved the entire problem. But no, the zombie devil basically facilitates his downfall by this bizarre decision. So Denji is being chased and almost makes it to the exit door, but he gets caught by a zombie and dies. After chopping him to pieces, the zombies toss Denji in the trash. The end. Seriously, why would the show continue from here? Denji got plot poisoned, he forgot his devil hunter skills and ended up torn to pieces in the trash with Puchita. Why would blood getting into Puchita's mouth heal him now? Why didn't Puchita heal himself earlier when both Denji and him got stabbed? Are you saying that Denji's blood didn't go into Puchita then? Because the ninja zombie got them in one poke. Seriously, devils in this anime just don't make any sense. Also, Puchita fuses with Denji, which is something that he could do, I guess. We are shown a flashback of Denji working in the forest, and fearing that after his death, Puchita wouldn't be able to survive alone, unless Puchita took advantage of Denji's body and fused to become a human hybrid. Afterwards, Puchita would be able to live a life that Denji never could have. A normal life. I'm very confused as to why Denji knows about this at all. How does he know he can fuse with Puchita? Is this a common occurrence in this world? Then we enter a dream flash. Denji and Puchita have a conversation in a dreamlike scene. In it, Puchita tells Denji that instead of taking over his body, Puchita will give his own body and heart to Denji. 
so that he will be able to have a opportunity to accomplish his dream. To jam it in. Jam, 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 jam on bread, jam, jam it in. Denji bursts from the trash and realizes what Pochita did. All of the zombies are still in the warehouse. I guess they are waiting for more devil hunters. The zombie devil is confused that Denji is somehow alive after all of the chopping and dicing, which is kind of funny, I guess. The zombie devil then orders the zombies to eat Denji. If only he had done that in the beginning, this scene wouldn't have happened. So Denji has another inner monologue. And he learns to stand up for himself or some shit, I don't know. But then he gets swarmed by the zombies. He was under the zombies for 27 seconds and he didn't get bit once. After escaping the zombie rugby pile, Denji poses for the camera on top of the zombies and he doesn't get bit for 25 seconds. Jesus Christ, what a lucky guy. Denji then super jumps and goes for the devil's eye. And then the zombie tosses him onto a steel beam. Afterwards, he falls from a few meters and then gets hit in the head by a steel pipe, suggesting that our protagonist is now a super duper man and there is no stakes here at all. Denji is basically immortal here and can do pretty much anything. He can fly, he can resurrect Pochita. I mean, everything is possible at this point. So what happens next is that Denji starts killing the zombies. Then the zombie devil tries to hit Denji in midair, but fails and then Denji slices it apart. Stupendous. Afterwards, Denji cathartically kills the zombie Yakuza's and realizes that he doesn't own anything to anyone anymore. So Pinkie Pie arrives with two suits. Denji requests a hug. And then she accepts his request. And then she hugs him very tight. I like that none of the two suits try to stop her in approaching Denji, implying that she can handle herself. I like that she takes control of the situation very fast. After Denji melts his devil form, she sees that he is a human and goes straight into blackmail mode. She threatens Denji's life. He can either work for her or get disposed of right here and now. She mentions that he will be fed, and he asks what would be for breakfast. She humors him and says that she can give him bread with butter and jam, and he immediately falls in love with her. She said the perfect thing in the perfect moment, and he agreed to follow her. And that's Chainsaw Man, everybody, episode 1. To summarize, I believe that this episode has a lot of flaws that prevent it from being good. But this show has a lot of positives too. The animation is quite good, and some of the shot composition is quite interesting. There are a few funny Denji moments that I quite enjoyed, and I also found Makima's introduction to be fascinating. She was quite the cherry to put on top of this cake. The problem of course is that this cake was filled with mustard and jam. The main protagonist had plot armor and plot poison all at once. Also there were a few ex machinas that were not established beforehand. The villains were hilariously incompetent with unbelievably insane motivations. Chainsaw Man's power levels are undefined to a point where I have no idea how much damage he can take before losing a fight. I originally rated this episode a 7 out of 10, but after this analysis my score has gone to 3 out of 10 at best. I enjoyed making this video, I've been editing it for 3 weeks now. I also hope that you enjoyed it as well. Sayonara.